All right. Tim Quas, founder, CEO of Market Structure <laughs> Edge, joining us here on Pre-Market Prep. Tim, you got like a big old smile on your face today. What's going on there? Well, things are looking up. Uh, at least that's how I feel. <laughs> you know, so, and I don't mind sharing this. The, you know, the, the reason I have been out some is my wife had a terrible cycling accident. And I mean, it was life-threatening. Uh, but she's getting better. And so oh, it, the, my mood, you know, will vary accordingly. You can tell that I've aged 10 years and I've gotten fat uh, because, you know, all I've been doing is eating and drinking. Uh, so uh, I'll have to I'll have to have stop wasting away in Margaritaville and say instead, come Monday, everything will be all right. <clears throat> okay. Little uh, a little nod of the nod of the head to that great philosopher. Rest rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, correct. Yes. All right, everyone. Yeah, Tim, that's fantastic book. news. We obviously you had reached out to us a few weeks ago to let us know. Yeah. We didn't know if we were supposed to say anything on the show, so we kept exactly. it private, Appreciate obviously. That. Um, but you yep. know, we, 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 you know, obviously we, it's fantastic news that your wife is getting better. Wish her all well for us Thank here. You. Um, obviously Thank chats you. with you here now too. So she's doing much better, which is awesome news here, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. That she is my whole world. So if I, yeah. it's very difficult for me to keep it together when she's not all right, but she's getting, she's yeah. going to be fine. So stocks uh, can right, always wait in those situations. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's uh, right. I, That's I appreciate right. you always bringing the perspective, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. Now, well, I clean I myself up. You know, I've got a haircut. I'm, you know, I'm wearing pants. So, you know, things are, <laughs> things are improving. <laughs> Unlike Adam Aaron. Uh, let's, uh, you know, there's a lot of talk about short interest and short squeezes and short volume and past year, actually really since COVID, since we had those uh, short squeezes. If you're, if you're looking at the short volume, let's go a little bit longer perspective yeah. over the past year. In the yeah. S&P 500 index, what's it saying about stocks now? Well, let me, let me, uh, thank you for asking that question, Joel. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me share my screen and I will, I will, I'll tell you how I think about this, which, you know, I'm not saying it's correct, but it does reflect the way that the market works. And, and uh, as, as the uh, edge mob knows, and the pre-market prep audience here for Market Structure Monday knows, we put a lot of focus on short volume not short interest. And uh, just to distinguish between them, short interest is a 1974 measure. I'm not saying there's not some merit to it, uh, but it, it, pre it predates everything that the market reflects today. I mean, there was nothing electronic until 1986 when the, when the Cincinnati Stock Exchange became the first all electronic market. Uh, and so, and then, you know, you add in all the things that have occurred since 1974. So short volume is the data set associated with the modified uptick rule implemented in 2010. And it's overseen by FINRA, but it's a great way to think about the supply chain of the stock market. We track it pretty closely, you know, is it, it and what's the trend in it and how does it rise and fall and how does that affect the market? And, and here's how to, how to think about it. So I have gone back a year. So in fact, it, it, just a little bit more than that across this, this uh, chart, but I'll, sh I'll tell you what this is, is showing us. I'll zoom it in as much as I possibly Please. can here for us. Uh, so this is, this is the SPY. The gray part of the graph is the price of SPY. So, you know, it's, we've, it's gone up from, uh, you know, 392 to whatever it was uh, on Friday, Four, 445. Yeah. Yeah, called 445. Uh, this is our algorithm called demand, market structure sentiment. It's a 10-point algorithm metering buying and selling. And uh, it's a pretty effective way to understand short-term highs, highs and lows in the market. There are a variety of ways. This is a pretty effective way. And here is short volume. And look at this. The trend line has continued to run up for the whole year, and it's over 50% right now. It's 51% of all trading volume in the S&P 500 stocks is short or borrowed or created by market makers. Uh, and so what could you generally conclude? Well, you could generally conclude that there is a short bias. When it drops, you can see right in here, this period of time, uh, it was well below trend. And what did the market do? It ran up. As it returns to trend, 
and moves a little higher, the market struggles. And you could go back in time and see the same thing was true here. So back at the banking crisis, short volume hit, it was 52% of the market, and this is where the market bottomed. As it came down, the market rose. Come back over here to uh, where, where we had the, you know, the, the low for the market was in October of last year. I forget exactly where we were, but let's call it, you know, 3,600 3, on the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the S&P 500 or SPY 362, 363. Uh, and look at the short volume. Right before that, it was extremely high. Then demand bottomed. And, and the supply came down and the market rose. It's a very good indicator. And so if we looked at it now, what would you expect? Well, there's something interesting about it here that is different from those periods of time. Demand is actually very near, near a market top. That red line for us is a very good indicator of a short-term top for stocks. Statistically, it's very reliable. So the, the, the rate of return when the the demand meter hits that red line is zero percent. I mean, if you add up all the days over that this period of time that the market it rises when it when the demand level rises over that red line, it's zero. It it may take a little while, but the it's a great indication of of a short term top. And then generally, supply will fall as demand rises, and then when demand falls, supply rises, and it's kind of the opposite here. So mm, this is interesting, is, Tim. Uh, of what, course, yeah. uh, with with options expiring this week and, and next, and of course a, a large S and P right. quarterly index rebalance, and exactly. you're starting to see a little bit of some topping showing up at least in the data. How would you be looking into going into this week and next? Yeah, so let's do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, show you this calendar. So here's the expirations calendar. And mm. traders, this is a good thing to know. You could go to the Options Clearing Corp and look up the expirations uh, calendar. You could get it from Edge. Just go look under resources and you'll, you'll see the one that we use at the, at the corporate business called Modern IR. But here's September. So this is what Mitch is referring to. That Okay, so you have demand peaking, supply at 51%. That tells us that people have a short bias. They're, if you're a global macro hedge fund, you are more short than long in all probability. And all of these instruments are going to reset starting Thursday with AM dated index options expirations, uh, triple witching on Friday, plus quarterly index rebalances for the S&P 500 and a host of others, including the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ runs over 100,000 indices. Uh, the, then on the 20th are VIX expirations. And the period between is a great arbitrage straddle between one instrument and another. And so all of this is occurring as supply rises and demand peaks. I don't know what's going to happen. What we do is look at that data to understand what's likely to occur. So if demand falls and supply continues to rise, we are going to have problems because it's already at 51 percent. Now, maybe it reverses. But this is the great way to get a, an immediate read on what big institutions that have a great deal of risk management data and information are doing. And so we're gonna look at that and say, well, how does their posture change? Are they more short or less short? Are they committing more money to equities or less? Now, generally, if the market demand peaks into expirations, the market has a propensity to decline on the other side. I'm not saying that's gonna happen. It's just a central tendency. So, Mitch, that's a long-winded way of saying we'll see, but we'll know what data to look at to draw good conclusions. And this is setting up with some seasonal te uh, uh, tendencies, right? Because you have the quad yeah, witch and uh, and market structure edge, and then uh, I don't know how many people you know follow the uh, sell rush of Shona by Yom Kippur here, but uh, <laughs> we get a we get a couple more days of rallying like this uh, with the holiday. Uh, coming up over the weekend. I mean, that could be an, uh, an interesting setup as well. Uh, just as far as mm -hmm. momentum, right? Are we are are you looking? Is we are are we in the MOMO mode or low volatility mode for now? It's absolutely a split, and I wouldn't call either of them great. Here's the uh, interesting thing: if you backed up about five days, there were 36 in low volatility. 
And that suggests to me, as we began the fall season, it's not fall on the calendar, but on Wall Street, it is, right? You start, the, when you trade after um, Labor Day, it is fall trading. And I look at that and say there is, a, there is an increasing concentration of money in low volatility. It's done that there are only 13 in here led by consumer staples. Look at what behavior is leading. In fact, passive money is leading every single category. All sectors. What does that mean? Everything. It means that the market is absolutely dominated by asset allocation. Money put, being put into things because they're products, not stories. Now, it's the opposite of, you know, you watch CNBC all day and it's all about the stories. Well, it's not the way that the stock market works. BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street are dominating the market. Momentum's got almost the same number. Tech leads. Passive money is the principal force again. So that would be like the world quants of the world, the, the, the quantitative hedge funds. That's, you know, passive money is, is indexes, ETFs, and quants. And, and quantitative money has become enormous. If you look at it, in fact, I can go here to this, the Benzinga September 11 portfolio. I would, if, look, if there's enough, if there are double digits in momentum, I'll trade momentum it, because you get a better, you have a better chance for returns. And so, it, looking at this group, here's some ideas for you. You know, things that have great supply demand divergence. That's what you're looking for. You know, there's the, it's, it's a basic economic principle. If there is more demand than supply, prices yeah. rise and vice versa. So Nutanix, Dell, Roblox, GitLab, Trade Desk, these are all things that you could trade. Let me get out of that and go back here. Uh, so so uh, there's the idea. I just accidentally closed the platform. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> but no uh, it's not great. You know, 11 isn't great. It's uh, it, There's a cautionary tale here. You know, if if broad sentiment at 5.9, I am beginning to think about either removing my money from the market or shorting it. You get to 6 and it begins to decline, mm. I will short the market. So, so right now you're thinking this recent rally that we've had over the course of the last week, which is kind of feels like a snapback rally almost. Right. You think this might fail? I do. I, you know, again, I can't predict it. Obviously, no, my predictive skills are not great. In fact, I was wrong. Two weeks ago, I said, well, it's possible NVIDIA will get back to 500. Uh, it got to 499.27. <laughs> Didn't quite on, get there on the august 3rd 30th so so i was wrong uh so i can't i will qualify and say i'm not predicting it but there are a lot of things here that make me cautious short volume at 51 percent options expiring broad sentiment at five nine and maybe peaking there which would be a very weak top weak tops tend to precede drops not a lot of choices in low volatility not a lot of choices in momentum look at how many there are in my 75 percent short portfolio just 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 uh, a, a week ago, there were 56 in it. It's doubled. So all of these things are cautionary notes for me. I wouldn't be plowing a bunch of money like I did. I mean, a week ago, I, everything I had in my trading account was in the market because the, the signals all pointed that way. Now they're beginning to deteriorate. Well, keep an eye on it, team. Uh, we're Sorry, definitely going to keep... Go ahead. Sorry, I, I just had one more question. Sorry, I should read. I, I Mitch always asked me. I got to read the Skype chat because he says Raph, and then I just butt in, and I'm like, I wing everything. I just butt in. I wanted to ask Tim one more question, but I'm like, when you go to the sidelines, Tim, this is one general yeah. question here. Do you just throw a park in treasuries for the week? Like, what do you do when you go to the sidelines? Because you know, or do you just sit it like and just ready to come back in? I'm just wondering. Like, obviously, you know, I move money in and out of the markets yep. as well here. Do you go to defensive names? Do you go to different stocks? What do you do when you go to the sidelines? Well, right now I sit in cash. I mean, in my interactive brokers uh, trading account, I'm I can earn four point eight percent on That's either nice cash. I, I mean, know. why not? It's very liquid. Uh, it it's uh, there's no better alternative than that. So maybe half cash, half short. That's what I'll do when the the conditions indicate it. All right, let's wrap it up here. Like always, we'll see what happens. You guys can keep up with market structure edge. And of course, the data will tell us all, right? That's what Tim's always pointing to. We'll see what happens, guys. Keep up with Tim Quas. And definitely, it's good to hear that things are doing better for you, Tim. And I'll tell you, I, I think everybody can agree. It's a lot better to see you smiling today. So. I, pre I appreciate that, guys. Good to see you. Thank you very much.
Definitely. Have a good